Hi, I'm Tyson Franklin, and I am going to be on the online prosperity show with Prosper. And we are going to be talking about marketing and a few things that I've learned over the past 30 years. Tune into it. You're going to love it. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, I've brought you the business mentor himself, Tyson. Tyson, how are you, my man? I am fantastic. Thank you for having me on your show. This is great. Absolutely. And uh, today we're going to be talking about why it's no secret there is actually money in small business. Now, if you're watching this show right now, you would understand that, um, you know, being in business and for it to be successful, you got to have strong systems. You got to be positive. It has to be structured. And for you to be successful in both life and business, there's got to be tools and mentors or people that are around you to help you with that. Now, Tyson basically um, helps business owners in the health industry to put money in their bank accounts by designing marketing strategies that actually work. I could go on and on about his accolades, um, his podcast and the two books that he's written, but he's here today to tell us why there's no secrets and actually making money in small business. Now, Tyson, Tell me a little bit about yourself and how you got started um, on your journey to be an entrepreneur. Okay. My background was podiatry. So I graduated from uh, QUT 1988, a long time, 30 years ago. It's gone like that. So when I did podiatry, though, we had a, a, a business subject and we had one, one business subject through the whole four years. And I went and did the business subject and I was the only person in the history of the university to get 100% for that subject. And the Dean of the business department actually came and contacted me and said, I want to talk to you. I chat with him. He said, I think you're in the wrong course. He said, I reckon you've just got this knack for business. You should do business. And I went, I'm just about to finish podiatry. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just about to finish uni four years. I just want to get out and start working. So, uh, I thanked him. And then straight away, I pretty much, I graduated, I got my registration, I think it was the 18th of December, 1988. And I opened up my clinic 25th of January, uh, 1989. So it was something like only 35, 36 days later. So I was just so eager to sort of get started. And what was interesting though, I did this project at hundred percent. The people that were marking it, were all university lecturers who I don't think may have ever had their own business because I applied that, uh, what I'd done in that project to my business and it was hard work. My, <laughs> my first business I set up, it was okay, but geez, it did. Yeah. It wasn't, it looked great on paper, but when it came to reality, it was a completely different thing. And I, I probably did everything wrong. I did a few things right, which were, were great. The best, best thing I ever did. And, Every business I've set up since then, I've, I've followed the same path, is when I set up my business, I went and visited every doctor, physio, chiropractor, osteopath in my area. It took me, when I set up the first one on the Gold Coast in Narang, it probably took me about three or four months to actually see everybody. And I didn't let, I didn't let anybody, I, back then we didn't have the internet, so you had to actually make phone calls, send out letters, and, and to actually get the visits organized. Then I jumped in my car and I did a personal visit with them. And the amount of doctors that said to me, wow, I've never actually met a podiatrist face to face. It was always just something in the mail or a phone call. And that, that was the best thing I did for my practice on the Gold Coast. And like I said, every clinic I've set up since then, that's the number one thing we always do. Get out there and be seen. People in the area need to know who, especially the people who are going to refer patients to you. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, people need to do business with those they know, like, and trust. And thank you so much for um, your story there. So now that you've dipped your feet, so to speak, <laughs> in the marketing, <laughs> in the marketing uh, sort of um, side of things, what have you found um, in, the, in the time that you've been in business? Why a lot of businesses have been failing um, to, to, to yeah. go past the five-year mark? I think the biggest mistake they make is they don't ask for help and they get advice from friends, family and other business associates who don't know how to run a good business either. So they, they've got a business that may be yeah, failing or floundering a little bit and 
So they go and ask their friend who's never had a business, oh, have you got any advice on how I can fix up my business? Or they'll ask their, their parents or they'll ask their brother who's never had a business. Instead of actually getting advice from someone who has actually done it before, someone who's, who's gone down that path ahead of them, who's a few years ahead and paying them for their advice. So I, I think a lot of people don't realize how important having a business coach or a business mentor can be for, for the success of their business. And, and what you pay them, I think, is, is insignificant compared to how they can actually turn your business around and save you so much time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. So people are listening to the wrong, um, you know, to the wrong advice and it's, 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 you know, causing problems within their business and they're not progressing uh, over there. What advice then is, um, what advice would you give to somebody else who's probably starting and doesn't have the skills that uh, you probably have right now, um, but wants to grow a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable? Okay. I think the first thing you need to do is start, start reading books on a regular basis. Start reading books in the areas where you know you're lacking skill. So whether it's communication, whether it's sales, whether it's marketing, just every book you pick up and read, you will learn something from it listen to podcasts. I'd probably listen to more podcasts than I read books, even though you'll see behind me, you know, there's a lot of books up on that shelf. Uh, and, and I get a lot of books as gifts. So I do enjoy reading, but podcasts are just easier to consume. And we were talking about this before we press record where whatever you're thinking about, if you go, Oh, I need to know how to do such and such a little bit better search for it and you'll find it online. You'll find a podcast and, and there's something to listen to. And so I think that's the first thing you, you need to start consuming some content but you need to step back and look at your business and go, who, oh, this is the one thing I ask everybody. It's the first question. Who is your ideal patient, client or customer? Once you work that out, then everything else becomes a lot easier and your marketing becomes a lot more targeted and you get better results. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, some people would think I'm a small business and I don't think I should be, you know, investing that much into marketing the podcast that you're talking about, the finding out who my avatar is, uh, and yeah. you know, all, all those, uh, modalities that actually help you, um, you know, move your message or to actually, uh, pass on your message or your brand. What, what sort of, um, you know, tips would you give to somebody, um, who thinks marketing is, is an expense that they can do with that? Oh, the first bit of advice I'd say, I'd say, give yourself an uppercut because you're, you're, you're completely off track. Yeah. Marketing is not an expense. Marketing is an investment. And that, that's the first thing you've just got to totally change your thinking, change your terminology that if you do marketing and you do not get a return, then yes, it is an expense. But if you're doing marketing and if you spend a dollar and you get $5 back, how could that possibly be looked at as an expense? It is an investment. So that's the first thing you've got to change the terminology and, and some, and you've got to look at where you're getting your marketing advice from. In my book, I, I talk about, you yeah, know, beware there's a sales rep coming to see you. And yeah, I call them, I call them the uh, like marketing sharks and I always say, yeah, would you jump into, uh, uh, into the ocean knowing that there were, it was just full of man eating sharks and I'm thinking, no, you wouldn't, you wouldn't do it without there being a cage around you. It's the same thing when, when you jump into the marketing waters for the first time, there's all these marketing sharks out there and they can tell when there's fresh blood in the water. Yeah. If you, if you put one little ad in the newspaper, the guys from the radio, the TV station, every local magazine, every paper, every online um, marketing person, they will see that ad in the paper and you will be inundated with emails, phone calls of them chasing you. And, and here's the mistake people make. They get their marketing advice from the same people that are selling them advertising. So, and that's something I say, you could be, yeah, if you're getting all your money, so I, I used to have a, a rep that say worked at TV and he gave me TV is the ducks nuts. It is the best thing. It beats radio, it beats newspaper, it beats everything. I went, okay. He left there and then started working for radio. And then he came and saw me. I said, well, I thought TV was best. And he goes, oh yeah, no, things have changed because the way that radio works now. And he explained all this. I went, okay. Then he left from there and he went to that newspaper. And I, let me guess, newspaper is now the best way to advertise your business and and this just went on and I'm, and i never took advice from him. i always got external advice like i said i had 
I had business coaches and I had mentors that yeah, helped me a lot through the path. I used to go to a lot of marketing seminars and, and now it's good. I can actually help people and pass on some of the information. So beware of marketing sharks or sales reps. <laughs> That's a big thing. <laughs> Absolutely. Now you are now helping other business owners, you know, especially in the health industry to put money in their bank accounts and you're helping them design marketing strategies that actually work. Um, maybe somebody who is a podiatrist or dentist or somebody who is, um, you know, th they just think my job is being a health person. I don't need yeah. to tinker around with podcasts. I don't need to tinker around with uh, Facebook or funnels and things like that. How do you uh, deal with clients like that? And I suppose that's the normal reaction that you have uh, with people uh, that you work yeah. with. Most well, the thing is, you, is you don't. Most of the people you'll work with have all of a sudden come to the realization that they need help. That's, that's right. the person that you, you'll bump into them somewhere, and there might be a dentist or a physio, a podiatrist, could be anywhere, anything in the health industry. And you'll mention that you help people with their marketing and put together systems and business plans. Oh no, no, I don't, I don't, I don't need any of that. And some of them don't. Some of them are naturally really good. Some people have been fortunate where they've set the business up at the right time in the right place and everything has just gone uphill from them. They've, they've learned nothing, but they've just got it. They just happen to have a good business. They don't need help because they're making really good money, but it's, it's the, per the person that needs the help is the one that realizes that they need the help. Yeah. Some people will be there and they go, Oh, my business is terrible. You know, it's not going too well. I'm, I'm actually losing money every month. I've got staff leaving. You go, well, yeah, maybe you need a, uh, need a business coach. Oh no, no, I can't afford that. that. They'd just be a waste of time. They won't be able to help me. And there was one particular person I, I knew who was a dentist. And at the time, my podiatry businesses were going through the roof. Their dental business was going down. And when I said to them, why do you think that's the case? And they go, oh, you know, it's ever, ever since the global financial crisis, you know, business has just been terrible. I went, all right. I said, well, I know other dentists and I know my own podiatry. Well, I know, I used to say, well, my podiatry business, I decided not to participate in the global financial crisis. I decided just to get on and build my business. And, and I know other dental clinics at the same time, this one was going down. There were other people that were expanding and opening up new ones. So it all comes back to that mindset that if, if somebody thinks they don't need help with the marketing and doesn't and don't need help with the business, it doesn't matter what you say to them. It's not going to make any difference. It's the person who goes, Hmm, I think I need help. And as soon as they, they, they know that they need help, then it's up to them to find out either how to do it or who to do it. That's the big thing. And who, who's more important than how probably. Absolutely. Now, um, Tyson, if people are watching this and especially if they're in the health uh, industry and they're wondering how they can get a hold of you, what's the best way that people can get a hold of you there, Tyson? Easiest way is just through my website, just tysonfranklin.com. And on the website there, it has information about the two books that I've written. Uh, it's got a link to my podcast and it's got some notes in there about, yeah, if you, if you want mentoring and that type of thing. The only people I, it's funny, I, I work with a dental company um, with, with this other dental. So anyone, if anyone's watching this who is a dentist and they need coaching, they contact me about that and I'll put them over to this dental company because I actually work with that dental company. So I don't do any individual dentist myself, but every other profession is fine. <laughs> I've just, an, just an agreement I have with them. I'm friends with them and they said, Hey, do you want to coach some dentists? I said, yes. And I said, but if I get any, I said, I'll push them your way and funnel it back through uh, their particular business. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I can't thank you enough for the time and the level of expertise that you've brought uh, to our website here today. Is there any sort of last words you would like to um, part with, you know, just in case some people are sitting on the edge and they're still thinking, ah, I've, I'm not sold yet on, you know, marketing my business as a health professional um, that you might have there, Tyson. Yeah. Um, well, two things. One is if you're looking for a good podcast, just follow the one that's over my uh, left shoulder. It's no secret with Dr. T. The, <laughs> the other thing I'm just saying, if, if you don't think that you, you, you need help with marketing or anything like that, just look at it, change the way that you're thinking. If your business is going great, then maybe you don't, but if business isn't going as good as what it should, 
just open your mind up to the possibility. And I look at it this way. I still learn. Yeah. I like to think I'm okay at marketing and I am still open to new ideas every single day. I'm reading books, what, listening to podcasts, uh, watching videos. And I learn something every day. I've got a book where I, my goal is to learn something every single day of the year. Yeah. 365 days. So I, a couple of years ago, I did a, a challenge called the 365 hour mental and physical challenge. If I turn this around, you'll actually see something on my wall there that has got okay. another load. That's a different story altogether. And, and there was a, it was an exercise challenge. And at the same time I had to um, listen to a podcast and had to take away one to three takeaway points from it. So I did that over a whole year. It was, <laughs> it didn't matter where I was in the world. I had to do, I had to walk for an hour and listen to a podcast. Anyway, and I wrote notes down from this. And at the end of the year, I had 71,000 words that I had written of ideas, tips, thoughts that I'd taken from over 365 podcasts. Wow. And that information is gold. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. It one day could be a book, it, but it's just, I might just pass it on to my children one day and say, this is valuable. <laughs> so I did it just finishing my second year now. I've modified it a little bit and then next year I'm going to modify it again. So yeah, it's a bit fun. And there's a lot of videos. If anyone goes on the Facebook and they just type in 365 hour mental and physical challenge, all my videos are there of what I've done over the last two years. Absolutely. So it's a bit of fun. Absolutely. Well, that, that book, I think it's worth <laughs> a lot more than um, you're giving it credit for, because if you're learning something new every single day, I believe we're here to live. We're here to learn. We're here to contribute. And the more you learn, the more you can contribute. So your contribution to this show again today is proof positive that um, whatever lessons you've learned from uh, that time you took that challenge are actually now uh, coming to benefit us. I can't thank you enough, Tyson, for the time you spent with us today. No, no, this has been fantastic process. Thank you for having me on your show. This is, um, like I said, I love sharing knowledge and I hope that anyone that listens to this, and this, this will sound real, I just want to finish on this. This is something weird that somebody asked me once, why do I do what I do? And I said, one day I'm going to be, I'm going to be somewhere, one day someone's going to find the cure for cancer. And I want to be that person that sparks the light in someone that actually does that. So it's not going to be me. I already know it's not going to be more than likely. It probably may not be any of my children, but maybe it'll be someone that I'll inspire who will inspire somebody else. And that person will find the cure for cancer. And that's why I feel like if I stop doing what I'm doing, then we'll never find the cure. I have to keep doing it because one day I'm going to inspire the person who will inspire the person. And wow. one day it'll trace back and they'll go, it was, it was this comment. It was that blog article. It was that video he did. It was this in, yeah, it might be this interview today could be the one that someone could listen to this now helps their business. Their business goes from where it was to a multi, multi million dollar business. They can then afford to send their child to the best university overseas. And that person gets educated and finds a cure for cancer. That's why I do what I do. Wow. <laughs> that sounds weird. No, but, um, no, not at all. Not at all. Um, I can't thank you enough for just bringing that across because at the end of the day, when you're doing your business, sometimes you, forget what you do it for and sure. when you realize that just you being there you showing up could actually inspire somebody to do things that inspire them you never know what what else is is, is available so with that i, I think i think thank that you. no thank thank you for thank you for giving the opportunity to speak that was great absolutely bye for now okay see ya <laughs>